Good evening. It's been some time since I made a video. So the last video that is on this channel was actually recorded during a uh, workshop I gave. So they were kind enough and let me also repost it on my channel. But it was not like one of my videos. So actually, I wanted to write a blog post, part four of my uh, series on Nix. But I figured, why not do a video for this? And so um, I'm going to talk about Nix. So if you if you don't know what Nix is, uh, I will give a very short introduction, but to only one tiny aspect of Nix, because Nix is really quite huge, and um, I will focus on the package manager. So there's Nix, the package man manager, there's Nix OS, a Linux distribution that uses Nix as its default pack package manager, there's the Nix programming language, and there's an, some other tools that I've seen online, I uh, haven't tried them yet, like Nix Ops for uh, like DevOps using Nix, etc. So I'm going to focus on the package manager. So what is what is Nix or what is maybe a package manager first and why should we care as users of the R programming language or data scientists more generally speaking? So the thing is um, a package manager is a piece of software that allows you to install other software. So if you're running a Linux distribution, you are familiar with package managers. Uh, if you're running Ubuntu, you know about uh, apt-get, aptitude, these kind of things. Uh, I think on Fedora, it's DNF. Uh, on OpenSUSE, it's Zipper, etc., etc. Uh, if you're on Mac, maybe you've used Homebrew to install some specialized software. Um, so Homebrew is a package manager. And on Windows, I think there's something something called like Chocolatey or something like that. Let's chocolatey I think that's the uh, one package manager yeah so it's chocolatey exactly so this is a package manager for Windows so I it's the package manager for Windows apparently and so why why do we use that um, and and why should we care well the advantage of using a package manager is that you don't need to go to let's say Firefox website to install Firefox you can go to your package manager and you install Firefox from your package manager or uh, if you want to install R, for example, you don't need to go to uh, the rproject.org website. You can install R from your package manager. And basically, that's what you have on your phone, right? The App Store, the Play Store, those are also package managers. So now, why, why Nix, right? Why should we care? So first of all, you should know that Nix is a package manager that is not only available for Linux, but also for Mac OS and for Windows, but for Windows, you need to activate WSL, uh, so Windows Subsystem for Linux. And once you have that, you can install Nix. So you can install Nix on any Linux distribution, on Mac, on Windows, and then you can use it to manage your software. Again, why? I think there's maybe two reasons I think Nix is really useful if you, uh, do, if you are doing data science, and especially if you are really uh, looking to a solution that allows you to build reproducible pipelines or reproducible analysis. And the reason is because Nix, if you install R with Nix, Nix will install everything that is needed to run R with it. So it will install like every bit of the whole tool chain. So it will install like a specific version of GCC, a specific version of GFortran, all these compilers that you need. If you install a library like rcurl, then it will also install curl for you. So it will deal with all the system level libraries for you. If you install these uh, geospatial libraries, uh, Nix will install GDAL, RGOs or GEOS or whatever it's called. There, there's a bunch of libraries like that that use this lower level system level libraries and Nix is going to install that for you. Um, so it's the same for R, it's the same for Python, doesn't matter. So there's actually really, really a lot of packages available for Nix. Um, let me see if this, uh, so sometimes I have problems with my internet. So maybe, yeah, I think I need to reconnect. I don't know what's going on like this past few weeks or so. My internet sometimes doesn't work. I, I have to disconnect and reconnect. Can I at least play the, the dinosaur game? No. Okay, so there's 80,000 packages for, for Nix. So that's really a lot. So if you if I if I look for dplyr, for example, dplyr is in there. So this means that I can use Nix not only to install R itself, but I can also use Nix to install dplyr, to install 
targets, etc. Actually, the entirety of CRAN, as far as I know, is available through Nix. So you can install every R package through Nix. And again, why why bother? Why do it through Nix and why not use the R install.packages function or if you're using Python, why not use pip, etc. Well, as I said, the, the, the main reason is that Nix will install every part of the toolchain, even the things you're not thinking about, like a specific version of GCC, a specific version of G4Tren, these packages that are needed to compile sometimes other packages. Nix is going to deal with all of that for you. That's number one. But number two is that Nix has a very cool feature. Uh, can I find the website? I think, yeah. Nix is uh, hosted on GitHub, all right? So what you can do is that if you, if you install like the latest version of Nix, and if you, you can use it with the, like the latest commit, right? So you will get all the software that you will install through Nix will be the freshest and software available. But if, because it's hosted on GitHub, if you go to an older revision or an older commit of Nix, then you can install the software as it was at that time. So this means, for example, if I, go, if I want to install R version 3.0.3, I can use this particular uh, revision of Nix. Or if I want, I don't know, R 4.0, for example, I can, inst I can use this particular version of Nix. And if I then use that version, and if I install R 4.0, R400, and if I say, well, I want R, but I also want dplyr, I also want, uh, I don't know, R markdown, etc., etc., all the versions of the packages will be at the right version that match this particular version of R. So this means that I can reconstruct complete development environments as they were at the time. And if you are familiar with Docker, you, this might ring a bell, especially if you are familiar with the the Rocker project, if you are familiar with the Rocker project and in particular the version images, these are images, uh, Docker images that come with specific versions of R. And so this thing, right, these, these images will allow you to also reconstruct an environment, but you need Docker. This is a containerization solution. With Nix, you can essentially replace RNV and Docker with just this tool. And it's a bit difficult to use, I'm not going to lie, uh, the entry cost is high. However, to make it easier for our users, I have started working on a package called Rix. And this package should make it easier to, to use Nix. The first thing you should install is Nix itself, if you want to use. Well, actually, you don't even need to have Nix installed to use this package. You can install this package and you can start using this package, but you will be you will not be able to then install the software. What this package allows you to do is to specify, let me show you an example. Maybe if I go in the vignette, uh, this package will allow you to write this thing. So I will say, okay, I want the current version of R, I want these packages, and uh, I don't want any other package, I don't need any package that is hosted on GitHub, and I want to use RStudio, right? And what this does, this generates this file here, which is called a default.nix file. And this file is what Nix will then use to build the environment for you, because this is another difference between Nix and traditional package managers. Nix is a so-called declarative package manager, so you declare what you want in your environment. So I want R, I want dplyr, I want, I want Python, I want Quarto, I want Jupyter, I want whatever. And then Nix will, from this let's say, set of declarations, set of instructions, will generate the environment for you. Whereas with a traditional package manager, the, they are imperative. So you say, well, I want to install R. Then I want to remove Python, whatever. I want to update Julia. I want to do this, I want to do that. So it's a, a series of steps that you have to call each time. With Nix, you describe what you want, and then from this description, you get the environment. So these files are not easy to write by hand. So that's why Rix generates them for you. And you can say, well, you know, instead of R version current, maybe I have here another example. Yeah, for example, this one, I want R version 4.2.1. And 
I want Quarto, and this Quarto here is not the R package Quarto, it's the system uh, software, the system level dependency if you want, which is also called Quarto, which is sometimes maybe a bit confusing. That's why it's in, it's in other packages. And so this will generate this file for you automatically. Then if, if you want packages from GitHub, right, you can also specify the packages from GitHub. You can say, this is my housing package that I wrote for my book. Uh, it's hosted over here. Uh, the branch name is called Fusen because this is the package that I built using Fusen. And then there's the commit, uh, which is, is uh, mandatory uh, because it allows you to specify exactly what version you want. So this is quite useful for reproducibility purposes. And then I have another package, actually the Fusen package, that I also installed from GitHub, even though it's available in the, in the Nix packages, but I, I wanted just to show it as an example. I installed this particular version of Fusen, and here basically I have these expressions that are automatically generated, right? And actually, what you can even do, and I don't think I have documented it yet, maybe in the readme, you can even install particular uh, sp specific versions of packages. So no, I have, I have not documented it yet, but f ah yes, I, d I did. For example, here, I want the current version of R, but I want dplyr at version one. So this will install the uh, version of dplyr at version one from the CRAN archives. So this works, uh, I think it works exactly as rnv, because rnv, you can also write it like this. I, I took inspiration from it. And the package will also get downloaded and installed from the CRAN archives. Here it's exactly the same. Uh, it fetches the tarball from, from CRAN and it, and it installs it. Um, so, so this is the basics. So how do you install Nix? So I have Nix already installed here, so I cannot install you. What I advise you to do if you are, if you are looking for it, uh, if you're looking to try it, uh, I advise you to install the... Here is the, the Terminate Systems installer. So the Terminate Systems is a company that uh, builds um, stuff around Nix and pro provides services around Nix. And they built this very nice installer for Nix that you can use for all these different systems, Linux, Mac OS, the Steam Deck, which is also Linux, Windows subsystem for Linux, etc. It's just this little thing that you run. And if you want to uninstall Nix, you can also use their, um, their documentation which, and their tooling, which makes it very easy um, in case you, you think it's not for you, but I highly recommend that you try. If you want to uninstall Nix, it's also just a single command that does everything for you. Because the, the, if you use the standard installer, if you want to uninstall Nix, it's a bit of, of, uh, of, of work. Anyway, let's try to get it uh, running. So what I, what I say, for, let's suppose that you have Nix installed, but maybe you don't have, uh, maybe you don't have R installed. Maybe you don't. So you, you cannot install Rix. Okay, so if you have, if you just have, for example, you bought a new computer and you don't have R yet, what you can do is you can use uh, Nix to install R and Rix and then start building these uh, new uh, default.nix files to generate environments. So let me show how, does, how that works. So here, this line here, so if, if you have R, you can install Rix from GitHub. If you don't have R, but you have Nix, what you can do is you can run this line. So let me, okay, let me, yeah, actually I, I clicked on a vignette, but I didn't need that. And my internet is super slow, I don't know why. Uh, probably my, my wife is watching a full HD movie on Amazon or something. Um, anyways, if I run this thing, okay, if I run this, this is going to automatically install R and Rix for you. Um, it might take some time, so maybe I, 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 I'll have to cut the video. Uh, so I had to cut it, took some time to install. Um, let me run again. The, the, reason, the reason it takes some time some, to install software with, with uh, Nix is that it's get, it gets installed from source. Uh, so it, it needs to get compiled, etc. So it can take some time. However, once it's installed, then it's cached in the so-called store. The store is basically uh, uh, the uh, folder on your computer that contains all the software installed by Nix. So now, as, as you saw, so I, I ran this, okay? And now I'm in immediately in the R version for 3.1, which is not the one from my system. So this is one that got installed by Nix right now. 
And here, the only package I have av available, apart from the base packages, is Rix. Okay, and I can now use Rix to build a new environment. So this is in the case, again, if I, like I bought a new computer or whatever, and I don't have R yet, or maybe I uninstalled R, um, you can use this, this line here, okay, that will automatically drop you in this shell with a specific version of uh, Rix, and you can use that to create a new environment. So let me try, let me go back to the vignette, um, and just take one of the examples. Uh, maybe let's take something, yeah, l maybe let's take this one because it's an older version. Maybe let's suppose, let's suppose that I want to install like a new, a new version. Uh, I want to rerun, I mean, I want to rerun an old project that was built on this version. So I just copy that and I just paste that in my, oh yeah, the, the path of course is not, that's because it's for the documentation. Let me just say that I want it down here and this will write a file called default.nix so let's let's take a look let's cat default.nix and as you see i have now my file that was generated uh, it was generated right now exactly uh, it says that it uses this it says that it uses this revision uh, for reproducibility purposes of, of nix it will install our version so and so if you have a problem tell me uh, and then come, comes the code that I won't comment. Anyways, now that I have this file, I can... So you see I'm in, in the Nix shell. Let me, I, I am in the Nix shell, so I can get out of this Nix shell with Control-D or with Exit, whatever. Now I, I, I'm in my system's command line. So if I, if I again, cat default.nix, this is the environment that I'm going to build. And how do I build this? Well, I build it using Nix build. Uh, Nix, uh, build. Uh, and this will take some time, so again, I'll cut the video and I'll see you in a couple of minutes. So actually, uh, I already had an environment that was like this one, so basically everything was used from, from, from the, the store, so it didn't take a lot of time. Anyway, um, now if I want to use this, okay, so I have this... Uh, I have this uh, I built this environment, but I'm still like in my in my user session, right? So how do how how do I use it? Well, I I just need to drop into my Nix shell, and now I am in my let's say uh, Nix environment, okay? That contains this version of R and this version of um, the packages I want, and. I, I'm, I'm still, I can still interact with my computer, so it's not like I am completely isolated from my computer like I would be in Docker. Uh, I can still, I have still access to my files, I have still access to everything, uh, and I can interact with it. It's just that now, in this environment, I also have access to a particular version of R. If I do which R, as you see, it's the R from the store, and it's R421, which is not the R that I used to... Uh, at the beginning, I had R four three one. So now I, I just I can st go into R right, and I can start using it. Um, I have these uh, warnings, but uh, I actually solved this. Uh, I haven't pushed the commit that solves this, but this won't appear uh, when you're going to try it. This shouldn't be appearing anymore. And so now that's it. Now I can now I have R. I can uh, so I installed dplyr and janitor. So let's let's load dplyr. Let's load janitor. And I can start working. Now, of course, you are probably thinking, well, I don't work with R in the terminal. I work with R in our studio. I work with R in code, VS Code or Emacs. You can do that. There is no problem. Uh, if, I, if I now uh, would, so I don't use our studio, but I use Emacs. So if I type Emacs, this is going to start my, my Emacs. As you see, it's this one. So I actually have another open already. Um, so it's this, it's this one that I just started in this environment. And because I use Emacs, I also use the, um, so the library that allows me to work with R is in Emacs is called ESS, uh, Emacs Speak Statistics. And as you see, this is exactly the environment I was in, so 4.2.1. And actually this Emacs here, this is the Emacs that is running from my uh, development environment, which, con which I think contains the latest, I think I installed the latest version of R. Yeah, so you see I have two versions of R running. This one is running in one Emacs from the 
uh, environment that contains three, two, four, three, one, and this one is running from the environment that contains four to one, and I could install yet another one and another one, etc., etc., etc. If you use our studio, you need to be a bit careful because our studio is a bit special. You would need here to change IDE from other to our studio, and this would actually install. Uh, uh, how would you say a Nix specific R Studio version? So if you if you are working like on three projects, you have three versions of R Studio installed, um, but it wouldn't take three times the space because it would just get uh, the you, the cache would just get reused. So this is a bit like Docker, like where you have the layers that get reused. If you use VS Code, replace other with code, and what this will do, uh, it will allow you to use your system code okay so the code that you have vs code that you have installed on your computer you can use it just like i showed you with emacs now you can use it for all the projects but it will install the language server package automatically for you which is needed for uh, uh, vs code to communicate with uh, with r so uh, this is rix um i i it's still in early development it, i've been working on this for like two weeks something like that um here, as you see, there are already some vignettes that will explain stuff. Well, this one not yet, um, but th there is, there are some, there there are some things here. And also, I have written three blog posts already on Nix. So if you are interested, do take a look. Uh, I think Nix is really gaining a lot of steam. It, uh, Nix has been around for two decades actually, so it's quite old. Uh, but for some reason, it was until recently, I think pretty much unknown, but now, as I said, you see more and more like YouTube, YouTube videos, blog posts, people talking about it on social media. So I don't know what happened, but something happened and now it's gaining steam and I was curious, I tried it. I've been playing around with it for like six weeks now and I must say I'm really impressed. I'm really, really impressed. And um, I, I really think that I will adopt it for my projects. I actually already started using Nix for my development environment that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm also now using it to deploy uh, shiny apps, etc. So instead of dockerizing them, now I, I use Nix with the specific versions that I need of packages of R, etc. It's really great, so do give it a shot. Um, try out Rix as well. Uh, Dix should make the entry cost as low as possible. And yeah, if you have any questions or whatever, drop a comment, send me an email, whatever and uh, yeah, play around with it. And uh, yeah, see you next time.